Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet, Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to all her Maharajas. Maharaj, today we are going to study from Canto 6, Chapter 5, verse number 44. Whenever you're ready, you may take the call over. Hare. Thank you. Thank you. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Sri Sukha Uvacha Sikh Graha Graha Chad Badam Narada Saru Sammataha Rutavam Saruvadohi Kipipsay Pais Varaswayam Sukadev Goswami continues, My dear King, since Narada Muni is an approved saintly person, why did the Jap to be Daksha? Right. But and by that he replied, Tad Badam, yes, what you have said is good. I accepted the curse. He could have cursed for Jafari Dasha in return. And because he was tolerant and merciful, Sado, he took no action. As stated in Srimad Bhagavatam, Sitiksha Karunika Suidam Sagadehi Nam Ajasa Chakra Shanta. Sarva Sarabhutsamantra. The symptom of a sadhu is that he is tolerant, merciful, and friendly to one of the entities. He has no enemies, he is peaceful, he abides by the scriptures. All his characteristics are sublime. sublime. Because Narada Muni is the most elevated of sadhus, devotees, to deliver Pradhyatha Dakta, he silently tolerated the curse. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has taught this principle to all devotees. Narati Suni Sena Sayor Ati Suhishuna Amani Namadena Kirtaniya Sadahari. One should chant the holy name of the Lord in a humble state of mind. Thinking oneself lower than the straw in the street, one should be more tolerant than the tree. The Lord of all sense of false prestige and should be ready to offer all respects to others. In such a state of mind, one can chant the holy name of the Lord constantly. Following the orders of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, one who preaches the glories of the Lord all over the world or all over the universe to be humbler than the grass more tolerant in the tree because a preacher cannot live an easy-going life. To be a deed, a preacher must face many impediments. Not only is that he sometimes cursed, but sometimes he must also suffer personal injury. For example, when Nityananda Prabhu went to preach Krishna consciousness to the two roguish brothers, Jagai and Madai, they injured him and made his head bleed. But nevertheless, he tolerantly delivered the two robes, became perfect Vaishnava. This is the duty of a preacher. Lord Jesus Christ even tolerated crucifixion. Therefore, the curse against Nara was not very astonishing, and he tolerated it. And now it may be asked why Narada Muni stayed in the presence of the Jeffrey Dachshund and tolerated all his accusations and curses. Was that for the Daksha's deliverance? The answer is yes. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says that after being insulted by Prajapati Daksha, Narada Muni should have immediately, should have left immediately. But he purposely stayed to hear all Daksha's strong words so that Daksha might be relieved of his anger. Prajapati Daksha was not an ordinary man, he had accumulated the results of many pious activities. 
Therefore, Narada Muni expected after delivering his curse, Dasta satisfied and free from anger, will repent his misbehavior and thus get a chance to become a Vaishnava and be delivered. When Jagai and Marai offended Lord Nityananda, Lord Nityananda stood tolerantly, and therefore both brothers fell at his lowly feet and repented. Consequently, they later became perfect Vaishnava. Thus then is the Bhakti Vedanta purport of the sixth canto of this chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam titled Narada Muni Cursed by the Japanese Gangsha. Omagyam Timiranda Shyan Janana Janana Sarakani. Jaksuin really come here in our test by Sri Guru Ramana. Sri Chaitanya Manobi, some stop become in the Gita life. Why am Rupa Kadam Mayam Gadati Swampada become? Mount Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pustaya. Utale Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Chukinamine. Namaste Saras Bhakti Deve Vauda Vari Kacharine. Nirvishay Sarsun Vivari, but that's where there is the time of Vanshikopa to move this job. Tipa Sindhu Bay, the Chantita, no, Harmony Dio, Vaish, no, 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 Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Hari. So we're hearing about the qualities of a great soul. Um, the preaching is to deliver others from the cycle of birth and death. In this particular case, um, Prajapati Daksha was quite elevated. He is one of the sons of, um, of Lord Brahma. And Narada Muni is also a son of Lord Brahma. It's interesting, they're actually brothers, both coming from Lord Brahma. Brahma had 10 sons. Narada is one, Daksha is another one. They were born from different parts of the body of Lord Brahma. But Narada is on a different level. He is called the Narada Deva, Narada Rish, or sometimes he's called the uh, um, best of all of the demigods. Because his only service to the Lord is to deliver the fall and so on. He travels throughout the universe doing that service. And when he meets an opportunity to deliver someone, he flies full attention. There are many stories that we know of, which, and many of the stories we don't know of, in the life of Narada Muni delivering fallen conditioned soul. And as Prabhupada says, a preacher is not meant to live an easy life because, you know, and this is the material world. In the material world, people really want their material life to be intact. Even if they take up some spiritual life, they want to add it on to their material life or make it a part of their material life. They don't really want to change in their material life. They want to try, as they say, to enjoy the best of both worlds. Of course, that's not possible, but that's the way they think. They yes, just like in some countries, when we, when we preach Krishna consciousness, I won't mention the places, but we can't speak so much about the regulative principles, no illicit sex, no intoxication, no movie, no gambling, because people will become adverse to everything else we have to say when we hear when they hear such restrictions. So that we deliver that after they become very seriously engaged in devotional service. We don't present that at the very beginning. And preachers who have presented that at the beginning have found themselves 
defending themselves in so many ways and finding it very difficult to convince people of the actual process of devotion and service. But that is the way of the world. Yeah. And so uh, Daksha was very upset that his service, he felt his service was being interfered with by Nara by delivering his sons, the Shavalas and the, uh, the first group was the Hayashvas and then the Salvalas. And Daksha, after some time, he got frustrated and just produced uh, a group of ladies. And so Narada Muni wouldn't interfere with that. So here now, Daksha, and Daksha has a tendency to get very upset easy. This is the sixth canto. If you go back to the fourth canto, you see how he got upset in the uh, relationship to his daughter, his daughter was ma is married to Lord Shiva, Sati, her name is. And that's a whole story that takes up the first seven chapters of the fourth canto, the deliverance of Daksha in that case. So he offended Lord Shiva. Now he's offending <laughs> Narada Muni by cursing Narada Muni, not understanding. But Narada Muni is not feeling offended. Srila Prabhupada said, so, uh, people will make a devotee their enemy, but a devotee doesn't make those same persons his enemy. He understands that this is the way people think. And they will they'll make, they'll make friends and enemies simply by some incident that happens in life. But a devotee sees everyone as the candidate for Krishna consciousness. Therefore, he tries to deliver them in whatever way he can. And so using different methods to deliver people, uh, people may never, may not understand and find fault and criticize. We have the example in the life of Srila Haridas Thakur, Namacharya Srila Haridas Thakur. Just because he was chanting the holy names of the Lord, and because he became popular for chanting the holy name of the Lord. And as a result, people were taking up the chanting of the holy name of the Lord. At that time, he, the area he was staying in was under Islamic rule. And so he was taken to account, chastised, and warned not to do it again, there's some consequence. But being a great sadhu, he said, you know, uh, my whole life, my whole existence, my very body itself, every part of my body is chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. I cannot even stop. So um, you may take whatever action you, you want, but I will continue to chant the holy names. And he started to reason with the uh, Kazi, and he says, we see that sometimes a person from a Hindu group will become converted and become a, a, a Muslim. And so uh, if a person from the Muslim group becomes a Hindu, what is the loss? We see this happen in both cases. Now that uh, king, that, Kazi didn't like that, and so he became very angry, and he decided to punish Haridas by uh, subjecting him to being whipped in 22 marketplaces. And Haridas accepted whatever was going to happen, but he constantly prayed to the Lord for the deliverance of his torturers while they were beating him. He never had any en enmity or any envy or any negative feeling towards them. In fact, he was thinking for their deliverance, although they were trying to kill him. We have a, a less severe case here, but we see the, uh, the mood of a, a great saintly person is the same. 
They always think about how they can deliver anyone and everyone from the cycle of birth and death. And um, so Narada Muni, as Vishwanath Chakravati Thakura says, and it would be natural for a saintly person when he is cursed and being insulted, he would immediately leave the place. But Narada considered, if I leave the place, he will be still fixed on his anger, and that is not good. So he stayed, so um, Doxa could vent his anger and be freed from the effects of that anger. So we see the qualities of the saintly person. They are, as they are, they are exa pure examples of the mercy of the Lord coming to the fallen soul because they are on the spiritual platform. They don't really worry so much about what happens to their body because they are fixed on the spiritual platform. And therefore, they work for the benefit of the conditioned soul. And Srila Prabhupada, uh, not, I'm sorry, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu mentions the qualities of something, uh, such sadhu. If you go down the page in the purport, come here, right here, the symptoms of the solid. Oh, don't go any. Oh, don't move anymore. The symptoms of a sadhu is he is tolerant, merciful, and friendly to all living entities. He has no enemies. He is peaceful, abides by the scriptures. All his characteristics are sublime. And to emphasize that point, the, the, the Srila Prabhupada includes Lord Chaitanya's sweeping statement of the qualities of a sadhu. More humble than the blade of grass, more tolerant than the tree, doesn't have any false prestige, only thinks himself as the humble servant of the Lord, and sees all living entities as, as being parts and parcels of Krishna. Therefore, they have respect for everyone. And then Lord Chaitanya gives this verse as a formula for chanting the holy names of the Lord. Kirtaniya sadarahi. Sada means always. One who practiced this, this level of tolerance, humility, pridelessness, and uh, respect for the more, amanidena, 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 uh, can chant the holy names of the Lord constantly. So we see here one of the qualities. So learning how to cultivate these characteristics allows one to make advancement in Krishna consciousness. This verse follows another verse where Lord Chaitanya says in the second verse of the Shikshasava prayers, um, because um, I have no taste for chanting the holy names of the Lord, I commit many offenses. But here, this verse is the answer to the previous verse. Here's how to get the taste for chanting, is to practice this, these qualities, humility, tolerance, pridelessness, and respect for all. And because one practices that, they see themselves as a representative of the mercy of the Lord for others, and therefore they are not disturbed by reverses in life or difficulties. Um, in a general sense, even any of us who practice Krishna consciousness, whether we were full-time preachers, part-time preachers, or are just practicing Krishna consciousness in a neophyte stage, have to understand that there are, this is the material world. And there are also people situations that come up which will make our spiritual life challenged or disturbed. Well, one should not um, take much heed to that. This is just the way the world is. And one should try to stay fixed in Krishna consciousness by remembering Krishna and always chanting his holy name. 
And then Prabhupada goes on to refer to other great personalities such as Lord Jesus Christ, where they tried to kill him through crucifixion. So, um, and Prabhupada also glorifies Lord Jesus Christ because um, Christ also mentions in some of his statements, uh, they don't, they do not know what they are doing. In other words, he tolerated the fact that he, all he was trying to do was preach God consciousness. That's all. That was his fault. So this, in this age of, in this age of Kali, when you're trying to preach God consciousness, there are so many envious people, even amongst the society of uh, spiritual people. People become envious of one who is preaching and is making disciples, uh, followers, and is becoming known as a preacher. Therefore, people will find fault with that person. And they look for fault, even if there isn't a fault. It's like we have the example of Daksha again, in the fourth canto, he found fault with Lord Shiva, but Lord Shiva didn't, it doesn't have any faults. <laughs> But Daksha was very expert in trying to create a fall in Lord Shiva, which was not a fall. And therefore, he blasphemed such a great personality. But in that case, the followers of Lord Shiva didn't tolerate Daksha's nonsense. And uh, when uh, Sati tried to defend her husband, Shiva, against her father, Daksha, Daksha rejected his own daughter. And then Sati became angry. He said, what is the use of having this body which is connected to you? Therefore, because my body is connected to you, I want to give it up. So she sat down in yoga mystic trance and activated the, the fire within the lower chakras and burnt up her entire body. When that happened, Lord Shiva became said that his dear wife who now had been had left because of the anger again, um, created by her father and so then the followers of lord shiva took daksha into account and it was a big fight in the assembly you can read about it in the fourth canto and ultimately daksha lost his head they cut off his head and they replaced his head with a head of a goat. And he became somewhat humble in that case. So uh, this is what it's like to preach Krishna consciousness. That, um, and Prabhupada would also say, the more successful you are in preaching Krishna consciousness, the more enemies you will make. <laughs> he said, this is an indication of success because the world is by nature adverse to the saintly persons. And you see now, especially in this age of Kali, a saintly person is given no, no uh, um, uh, what, what's the word, credit by society in general. Um, sometimes they say saintly persons are parasites because they do not take up occupation like everybody else. They are sometimes called parasites living off other people's work. But Prabhupada also counteracted that statement in a very long discussion by which he said, we are not parasites, we are living off our father who is the Supreme Father, the Father of all fathers, we are living up our Father, Krishna. And he can support the entire world, what to speak of a few people. So Prabhupada clearly demonstrated in a very uh, direct way that a devotee is simply dependent on the mercy of the Lord for everything. But, and you also hear the other example of Jagai and Madai here, 
Now Nityananda uh, tolerated these two brothers and injured them. And he stayed there to deliver them. And ultimately they became great personalities. And there is a, there's a place in Navadweep called Madai Ghat, where after Madai was uh, freed from all the reactions of his sinful activities and had repented, uh, the Lord gave him the service to build a ghat near the Ganga so people could go to his ghat and bathe in the ghat before they would take baths in the Ganga. Um, so that ghat is still there and his uh, place is considered to be a holy place. So you see, the power of the mercy of the Lord comes either directly sometimes from the Lord himself, but it always comes through the mercy of his representatives. But the, the point here that is being made is that uh, one cannot preach unless they're very tolerant. That's just the way it is. And people will find fault. Mm -hmm. um, even if you have no fault, even within the society of Vaishnavas, people will find fault with preachers because that is their uh, way of seeing things. Um, and that's just the way it is because they don't understand. That's why Prabhupada said, a neophyte devotee cannot understand an advanced devotee. They may think they can, but they can't because the advanced devotee is on a different level of spiritual consciousness. And therefore one on a lower level cannot understand the nature or the mentality of one on a higher level. But we can see by the examples, they simply work for the benefit of others. They're not into reputation. They're not into material remuneration for their services. They simply want to please the Lord by delivering the conditioned souls back to the Lord so that they can again experience their position as servant of the Lord. So Prabhupada is very strong saying, indeed, a preacher must face many impediments, curse. Sometimes even, even people, in the case of, we, we have the case of, again, Dakshi with Lord Shiva, even if a preacher has no faults, still sometimes people will find faults. It's just the way the world works. <laughs> so... This world is explained that the living entity falls from the spiritual world because they are envious of the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. Therefore, that envy causes them to fall down into the material world and take birth here. And once they come here, they are still carrying that envy with them. And therefore, the whole world is envious of each other. Therefore, there's always competition in the material world. Um, we see even in material circles, if someone is successful, there's one story given by one great devotee in one book he wrote, where there was one man in one office, he was working, he was excelling in his job and creating new ways by which the company can make more and more money. And he was giving more positions. And he was being eulogized by, you know, by the uh, the employer employers, <clears throat> but some of his fellow <clears throat> uh, workers became envious of his success and his popularity. So one day, when he was not in his office, they snuck into his office and stole all of his work, and. Uh, they took his computer, they took all of the work that he had been working on, and they destroyed it. So you see, this is how the material world works. If you're successful, then people become envious. Sometimes it's said in, in, in spiritual circles, you can be a, a nice devotee, but don't make too much advancement because it's not good. Because if you make too much advancement, you become better than others. And we cannot tolerate that. <laughs> so this envy exists everywhere. 
in spiritual circles, material circles. It permeates the entire world. As Srila Prabhupada said, his envy is there everywhere. And that's the nature of this world. Because people are not happy in this world and they blame other people for their unhappiness or they blame other people for their lack of success in the world. They always find fault with others. Okay, I'll stop there. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your wonderful Nectarian class and very, very pragmatic examples. We would open the line for devotees to go ahead and ask questions. I have already uh, Hitaksh Mahajan Prabhu, if you would like to yes. go ahead. Yeah. Uh, actually, I had a few incidents to share regarding spirituality that, that have been taking place with me over my whole childhood. Currently, I'm 13 years old, uh, but like uh, many incidents have taken place in all these years. So I just wanted to share a few of them and ask like, what could possibly be the reason for them? Okay, if you can uh, speak real slow, <clears throat> then I can understand. Oh, okay, 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 yeah. Actually, I wanted to say, I wanted to like uh, share some incidents regarding spirituality in this bhakti devotion, which has taken place with me over the time, like over in my life that I am currently living. Currently, I'm 13 years old. But in childhood, I have faced many incidents regarding spirituality. So I just wanted to share and like know what could possibly be the reason regarding them. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so like uh, when I was four or five years old, I, uh, like I was sleeping with my grandparents. Uh, so what happened? Uh, apparently, I don't know how mysteriously my, like I just got to wake up from the sleep. And when I uh, see at the left side wall of the room uh, where I was sleeping, I see a shadow of Krishna and uh, Ratha deity in that wall. You show, so show a shadow of what? No, Krishna and Ratha deity. Like in Iskorn, we see Krishna and Ratha deities. Oh, okay. In many temples, I saw like a particular a shadow, a clear shadow. And that photo is still in my brain. Okay. I like while meditation, I just uh, many incidents happen to me. Like I go into a different realm. Many pictures come in my mind while doing meditation in this period. And uh, in my dreams, many like many many great yogis like give me like their darshans. These incidents are just growing and growing by the time when I'm growing spirituality. Well, you're fortunate. I just wanted to ask that, like, what could possibly be the reason that in these are incidents are taking place? You can't give a reason for these things. It's just consider yourself fortunate, that's all. These are the mercy of the Lord. Huh? You, you so, try to, like, we cannot understand the mercy of the Lord. It comes accordingly. It may come to some in one form. It comes to another in another form. The Lord shows different things. It might be also teaching us from you have your experience at a very young age that this is your actual uh, duty in life is to worship the Supreme Lord in devotion. Giving you a message that here I've come to you. Please now understand this is your this is who this is who you should be worshiping. Yeah, no, no, but, no. I had this uh, thought in my mind that uh, when I was four or five years old, then I uh, got to see the shadow of that deity. I don't know how that uh, shadow appeared. Then I just got into a mysterious sleep at that moment. But later in my current life, I, I am doing this bhakti moment. Like, coincidentally, this is happening. Good. So um, I, don't, I don't see any problem. You just consider yourself blessed by the mercy of the Lord. Uh, and Prabhuji, I have one more question that, uh, like, while doing meditation, uh, like few yeah, questions come in my mind. Like while doing meditation, no, like I am plain. No questions come in my mind. Everything is blank. But after I'm done, uh, done with my meditation, after two three hours, randomly when I'm sitting, randomly like question pops in my mind. Uh, question pops up in my mind that uh, how how possibly could the uh, past of our India could be how this universe would have been formed and all these questions. 
Yeah. Are you chanting the holy name? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, all of these things are happening by the mercy of the Lord. And the questions you have that come into your mind, then you should speak to people who can help you answer your questions and uh, clarify all of your doubts. Yeah. So consider yourself fortunate. Mm -hmm. There are many people who never get a chance to even think about these questions. They're too busy trying to enjoy this material world. But Krishna interfered with your life in such a way as that you wouldn't go down the path of material life. So he uh, wanted to direct you, even when you were small, to the to proper path of devotion. Mm. So now when these questions come up, there are chances to understand things more deeper and clearer and mm. make it in, in, in spiritual life. You're well, fortunate. Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Thank you. Uh, Nina? Yes, Maharaj. I have a question to ask you at the end, so just remind me in case I forget. Sure, sure, Maharaj will do. Devotees, go ahead and switch on your camera so Maharaj can see you all, can bless you all. And uh, while talking to you, he can, he can, it'll be great if you can see who he's speaking with. Um, there is one question. Sorry, go ahead. Somebody was speaking. That was Maharaj. Tiffany Mataji, would you like to go ahead and pose your question? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, as you were speaking of at the end of the class about well, we're in Kali Yuga, and it is a world that seems to be permeated with envy. Um, <laughs> I was wondering what is the best way for us to deal with that, especially as devotees, as, as devotees of Krishna. How do we handle those situations, or what is the mindset that we should have when dealing with envious people? Well, we have the example in this particular verse, Narada Muni tolerated it. But maybe we're not on the level of Narada Muni we can tolerate. So we also saw that Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakura said that when Narada was insulted, normally he would just, a person was in that same case would leave. So sometimes that is, seems to be the best um, way to when when is in a situation where they're they're, they're the to the target for someone's envy, they remove themselves from that association. You know, sometimes we have to uh, hit the delete button on some of our emails that we receive <laughs> because we know what's going to be coming up next by reading such things. So we just somehow distance ourselves from that. If, if you try to argue with an envious person, it's like stepping on a snake. They become more envious a lot of times. So you have to learn to tolerate. You have to learn how to forgive. These are also elements by which we can counter, act, and go on in our life. But um, just like it says, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending are the four activities of the body. So in the example of great souls, they eat little, they sleep little, they don't engage in any type of mating, and for defense, they keep their distance from envious persons. <laughs> That's a form of defense, keeping distance. <laughs> and people's envious envy will go on, and a lot of times you can't change that. But uh, 
but we, you know, we're someone in between the overreactive person and Narada Muni, where we, uh, if we're the cause of someone's envy or the target of someone's envy, just tolerate it and go on. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for your answer. I appreciate it. Just expect that this is the way the material world is. Therefore, if we practice humility, tolerance, giving respects to others, we can rise above all of these difficulties and stay situated nicely in, in spiritual consciousness, Krishna consciousness. And then what's going on on the lower levels is not so important because our consciousness is fixed on the higher level. Like I know one very senior devotee, very senior. And uh, people, there were a whole group of other people who were finding fault with him constantly. But not openly, but through the internet. Be careful, the internet is um, uh, just like one of my god brothers said, Facebook, actually the name is Disgrace Book, not Facebook. <laughs> it's a platform for criticism and envy for others. All of these social medias have turned into these things. So uh, this god brother, he was being, and he wasn't retaliating at all. So his disciples decided they were really becoming upset. Their guru was being, uh, you know, challenged all the time. So they set up a whole series of other social medias with great statements glorifying him. And therefore, when people would hit his name, they would get to the devotee's social media and not to the, to the reactions of others. This was a counteractive measure. I don't know how it took a long time to do this, but it worked. And now the social media always brings up what is most uh, voluminous rather than what is, you know, what is there. So, but this social media, I don't even go on any of them. My disciples, they have me on these different things, but I don't, I haven't read anything of Facebook, Instagram. I don't know, whatever else they call it, whether some of the other things you, even you, YouTube, well, YouTube is, is useful because you can preach on YouTube. So, uh, you know, I don't bother with all of this stuff. <laughs> People say whatever they want to say. Thank you so much, Maharaj. I truly appreciate your answer. And as um, Nina Mataji um, mentioned earlier, how pragmatic your answers always are. We can put them into practical use right away. So thank you so much. I appreciate it, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. There was one quick question. Yes. Um, Maharaj, you mentioned He's thanking you for the nice class. And then he says, where is the Madhai Ghat located in Mayapur? Where is the? Madhai. You know the Jagai Madhai? I think he's yeah. asking for the Madhai Ghat. It's, yeah, it's along, the, uh, it's along the Ganges River. You have to go outside of our compound and we go down towards uh, the Jagannath Temple. Somewhere in that area where the road veers off to the right and goes towards the Jagannath Temple. In in that area there, it's, I think it's very much near the, uh, the uh, what is it called, the Baku tree, where... Uh, the Baku? The Baku tree is one of the, uh, the tree where um, it indicates it's half black and half white. It's the connection between Lord Chaitanya and Chantasi. Yeah. It shows the, the unity of these two personalities in the form of this different colored tree. It's somewhere in that area, and you'd have to, when you go down to 
Mike, or you'd have to ask around where his mud I got. I can't think of. It's, it's a little remote. <laughs> But it's somewhere near that, near where the entrance, the road that goes, veers off to the right towards the Juggernaut Center. Thank you, Maharaj. Um, Uja Mataji, do you have a question? Yes, Mother. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, I'm with Rana. Maharaj, my question is that uh, uh, sometimes, I, though I uh, do chanting regularly, but I feel very, sometimes very low cause of uh, health issues and all. So, I mean, uh, there is some distraction uh, while doing chanting. So, how can, I mean, how can I uh, face this problem, Maharaj? Yeah, I have the same problem. <laughs> Old, old age. <laughs> There's all these distractions when you get old. The body doesn't work. The mind is a little sometimes tired from the previous day's activities and not enough rest. Or the leg hurts. Or the back itches. <laughs> or this kid screaming outside and we can't chant. <laughs> What can you do if you try to try to do your best? That's all. Um, sometimes when people get very, very ill, they find it very hard to get the energy they need to chant. So that we, sometimes we recommend they chant in their mind. Mm -hmm. And that way they don't have to ex try to expend or generate so much energy, which is not there. But sickness and, you know, uh, the body is just the way it is. Those two different changes, it breaks down, it gets old, it doesn't work, has so many problems, it's just the way it is. The scriptures do not well, over overestimate the problems that come with old age. That's why old age is one of the four uh, Inherent uh, defects of the of material life: birth, death, disease, and old age. The disease is there, old age is there, and death is just waiting to make its appearance. <laughs> it's just waiting. So somehow you just have to continue to try to chant along. Think of ways that you can improve your chanting according to the situation. <laughs> Maharaj, uh, yes. uh, Maharaj, somewhere uh, in the devotees lecture, senior devotees lecture, I I, I heard that uh, we should not disturb, we should not uh, ask uh, for our for our health or for any service, uh, for uh, for uh, any any help uh, to Radha Madha Radha Damodar because we should not suppose to uh, suppose to ask something to our de deities or our, our God, our Krishna. We should not suppose to ask anything to them. Krishna knows your situation better than you do. So there's no, that's why he says on sort of the material level, there's no need to ask Krishna anything material because he knows everything. And if he wants to change, help in some way, he can. Or he may want to allow you to undergo the same difficulties you have. And there may be some reason for that to help you to become more devoted to him, more dependent on him. Sometimes difficulties in the material world are opportunities for greater, greater chances for surrender. When we realize Sometimes we think, oh, we're okay. When things are going nicely, we start to get a little, a little enthusiastic and a little proud of our you know, present situation. Then some, something happens and, and Krishna shows you, you know, this, is, this is the situation. <laughs> so, Thank you, Hare Krishna. Then what's going on? Yeah, if we always depend on Krishna, you will always 
help us in any situation. Maharaj, one quick question. So when early in the morning, the mind is very peaceful, we chant, but then we go out to the material world and then somebody says something bad or except our consciousness gets affected. Now in the evening or in the next morning, the same thing keeps playing in the head. We try to focus, but the same things keep playing in the head. How not to get affected or how, because sometimes I struggle with this, Maharaj. I'm trying to offer that, that, oh, Krishna, I surrender my problems to you. They are not mine anymore. But then, however, you know, it comes back to the mind and the chanting gets affected. How not to get affected? How do I protect the peace of mind? You're still trying to solve the problem by... The problems on the mental level. Therefore, the best way is just forget about it. <laughs> you might say, well, it's hard to forget about it, but that's the, that's the way you have to go. So turn on the Japa channel and turn off the other mental channel. It'll keep coming back, but it gets weaker and weaker every time you turn it off. And then pretty, pretty much it's gone. So every time you try to think, oh, here it comes again, I feel this bad. Why did that person say that? Why did I go down that street when I was going to take another route? And therefore, that when that happened, I made the mistake. Oh, uh, yeah, so many things shoulda, coulda, woulda. The shoulda, coulda, woulda program. I shoulda did this. I coulda did this. I woulda did this. But that's too late. You can't think in that way anymore. So just turn it off. Yeah, turn it off. And then you keep turning it off every time it comes up, and then it gets weaker and weaker. And weaker. Yeah, not, not to give importance. You're right, Maharaj. Yeah. Not, to give, not to give importance. Yes, right. You think you're going to solve it by adjusting your mind in a certain way. Yeah. Or you could say, well, actually, what they said, I deserve it. Hmm. That's another way of looking at it. I deserve it. Krishna is using that person to teach me something. Right. <laughs> Wonderful, Maharaj. Thank you so much. But if you have any false ego, it's going to hurt. If you have no false ego, then it's easy. Sri Devi Mataji, you have a question? Please go ahead. Thank you, Nina. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances or glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for this really instructive class. In this purport, it is said that Narad Muni could have left, but he stayed there just for Daksha to vent all his anger and then come to the point of repentance. But Daksha himself is a very great personality and that's a different era and a time. Today in the world that we live in, Kali Yuga being what it is, is that advisable to stay when someone is angry and blaspheming you and shouting at you or whatever, or is it better to just go away? Well, that depends on you. I had a situation where one devotee was really blaspheming and criticizing a very senior devotee. So I wanted to make a difference. So I approached him. And I started to glorify this devotee and uh, challenge him for what his statements that he was making. He became very angry with me and started to fire back on me. I remained completely quiet and simply listen to all of his vituperations. And after some time, he got completely worn out. And he actually became real humble, apologized to me. And then he went to apologize to the devotee he was defending us. That worked in that case, but it's not gonna work in every case. And you see, you say, you have to, you have to see Vishwanar Chakravarti Thakur doesn't, he said, you know, normally Narada should have left that place, but he didn't. So if Narada left, would have left that place, there wouldn't have been any fault on the part of Narada Muni. 
but Nara understood here's a chance to deliver him. So he stood to bring that deliverance about. So you have to see the situation. Guru Maharaj, I have a follow-up question. When you said that devotees, we should learn to be tolerant, we should be um, accepting whatever the situation as being arranged by Krishna and try to do the best uh, we can in those circumstances. What if we think we made a mistake in the first place by taking up that situation or that project or that position and then we just go on saying that no, maybe this is what Krishna wants, so I should work with it. Or maybe we made a genuine mistake and we must do something else. How will we know to stick it out or to change? In that case, you might need advice. <laughs> advice is always the quality of a person who is intelligent. They don't think I can solve all my problems. But if I get advice from people who can help me, the people who know, then I might be able to understand the answer to the, the situation I'm in. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for the reminder. Hare Krishna. We think we're intelligent enough to handle it. And we might find ourselves going deeper into a, a mental whirlpool and just spinning around. So you just get some advice. Sometimes people can see your situation better than you can many times. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Sometimes it's hard to even remember even this simple thing. So thank you so much for giving us that enlightenment. Yeah, you always ask me questions and I give you advice. Right? Okay. <laughs> there is an interesting question from Supriya Mataji on the chat. She's saying, I have a runny nose. How do I do how do I chant during such times? <laughs> a lot of tissues there. <laughs> I guess I don't know. That seems to be a practical answer, but um, you know, try to try to solve that problem. Um, one of the ways to uh, to deal with nasal problems is called Jiao Nadi. It's a Ayurvedic thing. You know what Jiao Nadi is. Anybody know? Jal Nada? Jal Nada? Jal Nadi? Jal Nadi? Yeah, you, you take this spout filled with water with a little bit of salt in it. Warm water, not too hot. And it's a spout. You put it into one side of your nose and then you lean to the side and you let that water go into your nose and come out the other nostril and it cleans the whole nostril out. And uh, if you do that regularly, your energy levels will also go up. It's also recommended for people who don't have that problem. It also helps to increase their, their energy levels. It's one of the features of uh, that is somewhat related to pranayama, but not exactly. It's called jal. Jal means water. Jal the maybe. When we be um, Jalmeda or Jalmedi, I'm not sure. Yes, yes, Maharaj. Jalmedi, you take it when you're taking a shower. You hold a little bit of water and then you take it from the nose and take it out from the other one. Yeah, but there's actually apparatuses you can use. But you usually you have to use a little bit of salt in there. Because if you don't use salt, it also could damage the, the membranes of the nose by just doing water itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your Ayurvedic reply, Maharaj. Um, Supriya Mataji. Yeah. Okay, Supriya, I hope that helps. <laughs> Mataji, go ahead, please. Mataji, you're muted.
Mataji, we are not able to hear you. I think I answered her question. She said that. Yeah. Okay. Just yeah. yeah, let's move on. Shri Hari Radha Devi Dasi Mataji. Would you like to go ahead? Please? Uh, only this time, one second. Your voice is breaking. Um, can I be seen? Yeah. Um, my question is that um, talking about the false ego. Okay. What is your question? My question. Right now, the ego. So, someone who has false ego will get distracted. We all have false ego, don't worry about it. <laughs> That's what it means to be in the When you get rid of your false ego, you're liberated. Mm -hmm. Mataji, would you like to type your questions? Would you mind no, typing your questions? I cannot hear you. Okay, it's it's okay. Never mind. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Very, very wonderful class, Maharaj. Very beautiful explanation and very beautiful words. The purport is so nice, you know, the whole qualities of uh, pure devotees are given to you. I, I can see all the qualities in you, Maharaj. You are so humble and... You know. <laughs> Mukankaroti Vachalam Pangu Lukate Girin Yakripa Karasambande Sigurun Dinatarinam. By the mercy of spiritual master, one can perform activities way beyond their capacity. It's only the mercy of the spiritual master. In this case, Srila Prabhupada. Yes, Maharaj. Maharaj, there is an interesting question from Supriya Mataji on the, on the text. She says, we have regulative principles only related to our body. Why don't we have regulative principles to follow for karma we do by speech? We do a lot more karma by speech than our body. Any thoughts on that, Maharaj? Yeah, Bhagavad Gita, 17th chapter talks about the austerities of speech. You can, uh, if you want to go to that verse, Bhagavad Gita chapter 17. Um, I think it's verse 16 in chapter 7. Verse 15, thank you, Narayana. Um, 17, 15. Austerities of speech. Anubega karam bakyam satipriyam vikam chaya swadhyaya vyasanam chaiva van mayam tapa uchtite. Austerity of speak consists of speaking words that are truthful, pleasing, beneficial, and not agitating to others, and also in regular reciting Vedic literature. One should not speak in such a way as to agitate the mind of others. Of course, when a teacher speaks, he can speak the truth to the instructions of the student. But such a teacher should not speak to those who are not his students if he will agitate their mind. This is penance as far as talking is concerned. Besides that, one should not talk nonsense. The process of speaking in spiritual circles is to say something upheld by the scriptures. One should at once quote scriptural authority to back up one 
what is saying. At the same time, such thought could be very pleasurable to hear. By such discussions, one may derive the highest benefit and you elevate within society. There is a limitless stock of Vedic literature, and one should study this. This is called penance of speech. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Any other question from any devotee? Please go ahead. Supriya Mataji was further adding, we also regret and repent things we do instead of what was done to us. If we just follow principles of no reaction, no anger, we mitigate many karmas and don't entangle in others' karma. She was just sharing. Yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. Good point, yeah. Yeah. If you want to live in this world, no matter what your position is in the world, you always have to learn tolerance. And for a spiritualist, tolerance elevates one to the platform of being able to chant the holy names continuously. So tolerance is a very lofty quality. And it's one of the qualities of the mode of goodness and allows one to chant the holy names and to engage in devotional service with determination. Yeah, very nicely she, she men mentions here, no reaction, no anger. But uh, just a follow-up question, but the reaction we might not express with the speech, but it happens in the mind. So I don't know if that is also affecting the karma at the mental level, because we might not express it. However, it has touched our consciousness and it's there in the head. I think that was related to your question. <laughs> yes, very true, Maharaj. Yes, she, Mataji gave the answer so nicely. Thank you, Shupriya Mataji. We, we answered that by saying, you know, if you, if you take it on the gross level, it gets stronger. If you leave it on the subtle level, it's weaker, but it's still there. And then gradually, you can dissipate it on the subtle level by gradually replacing it with Krishna conscious thoughts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maharaj, I wanted to kindly remind you, you had a question or a... Yeah, it's a, it's a question to you directly. Um, what is the actual date of the opening of the Naperville Temple? Uh, April 22nd, it's on Akshay Tritya, or April oh. 19th, I think. 19th, I said that today to someone and they said it's, that's a Wednesday. And do you have a concern, Maharaj? I can take it up with our uh, president, um, our temple president. No, if it's April, whatever the date is, I just want to know. And let is me it... just check when is Akshay Tritya. I think I'm confused now. I think it was Akshay. Someone who wants to attend and they wanted the date from me. So I said the 19th. It's 22nd. The... 22nd is Akshay Tritya, right? Yeah. So 20, Maharaj, it, 22nd is a, is a Saturday. Saturday, yeah. It would seem like the weekend is the appropriate time because people are available. Yes. April 22nd is the actual date. Yes. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. Thank you. Any last minute questions, devotees? Rajesh Prabhu, please go ahead with your question. Sir Krishna, thank you, Mataji. Sir Krishna, Dimaj, 
and up and arms to everyone. Beautiful class, really, really instructive, Marge. Um So many points, but there's one that sort of sticks out to me, if I can ask a little bit about this. Um, so Narad Murli, I, I'd never really thought of him before as being a, a son of, of Brahma and sort of thinking of him, you know, in terms of demigod status. Um, you know, we, we often hear how how amazingly um, devout and how, you know, how amazing um, Narad Murli is as, as a devotee, as a, as a teacher. So is there anything more you can maybe say about Narad Muni and, and his different sort of role, roles and different ways of sort of thinking about Narad Muni? Um, well, he's called Deva Rish. That's one of his names, Deva Rish. He's the Rishi of the demigods. Um, and there's a whole section in the... Uh, First canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, where when he's instructing Vyasadeva, because Vyasadeva is a disciple of Narada Muni, he refers to his own life as a way to explain his position to his spiritual master. And um, that uh, narration carries on for many verses. In fact, there's a whole chapter on the life of Narada Muni. I think it's around the sixth chapter of uh, the first canto, somewhere. I would guess it's the sixth chapter. I don't think it's the seventh. I think it's the sixth. So you're saying that, sorry. But um, yeah, and there you can learn everything about Narada Muni, his previous life, his worship of the Lord in his previous life, how he became Narada Muni in the, in the next life. Thank you, Maharaj. Just, just you speaking about this, you were reminding me of uh, when, I, when I was reading uh, this section. So I think I need to go back to this. Thank you so much, Maharaj. You're driving, huh? Yes, uh, on, on, on my way to some uh, Ayurvedic stuff. So I was also paying attention to the advice you gave uh, about the breathing through the nostril and, and the. Uh, I'll come back to that if I can pay a bit more attention. <laughs> yeah, uh, Rajay, send me, a, uh, send me okay. your uh, email address. Okay, Maharaj, I will do. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Amazing class. Thank you. Nina, Nina you're, you're muted. Sorry, sorry. Now I'm saying if there are no last minute questions, should we end the call here? Or what should we do, Maharaj? You tell me. Yeah. Thank you very much. Obeisances to all the devotees. Hare Krishna,